Uh, today I, I, I titled my message uh, called what do you want turn to your neighbor ask him what do you want let's read from Luke chapter 18 <clears throat> verse 35 and we're just gonna read this story uh, as Jesus so it's Luke uh, chapter 18 verse 35 <clears throat> as Jesus approached Jericho a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging when he heard the crowd going by he asked what was happening they told him Jesus of Nazareth is passing by he called out Jesus son of David have mercy on me those who led by uh, uh, by the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet but he shouted all the more son of David have mercy on me Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him when he came near Jesus asked him what do you want me to do for you Lord I want to see he replied verse 42 Jesus said to him receive your sight your faith has healed you immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus praising God what do you want me to do for you I think it's uh, almost like uh, forgive me for this phrase it's almost like a stupid question you know you got this blind man he's begging you know son of David have mercy on me and then you ask him hey what do you want me to do for you well don't you kind of see it's obvious but yet Jesus takes his time to ask him what do you want from me so keep that on in the back of your mind and um, Jesus he died on the cross for all the blessings of God to be available for us he brought us salvation the word salvation is sozo which includes healing deliverance breakthrough or blessing and salvation for our soul I mean it includes the whole package he died on the cross to give us that salvation not only salvation of our soul but all the all the heavenly blessings that father has in store for us he made it available he gives us to us freely the question is how much of it do you want to manifest in your life what do you want to see Jesus do in your life for you see because we serve God there's a good God he desires good things for us. In Jeremiah 33 and 3 he says, ask me and I'll give you and I'll show you great and mighty things, the things you haven't seen. And many, th and many, uh, many other scriptures throughout the Bible he encourages to, uh, to ask us and he says, I'm willing and I'm ready to give you whatever you ask. He is ready to do good things in our life. The question is, what do we want him to do in our life what do you desire what are you passionate about what do you want him to do in your life let's go back into the into the life of Israel God promised them a land of milk and honey and he said listen if you um he said that I have the I have a land of milk and honey for you and I have this land for you he told them how much land he has for them and he said you know 400 years is gonna pass you're gonna come out and you're gonna conquer all this land yet 400 years come by and they're still in slavery not until they started crying out and they start asking and they started desiring they started wanting to leave the slavery that God actually takes them out so they go and they leave they go through the wilderness they come they uh, they go through the challenges Pharaoh is chasing them finally Pharaoh dies in the Red Sea they come out rejoicing and now they go and send spies into the promised land to see what the promised land holds if it's true what God promised them sure enough it is true but there are challenges and they don't and they chicken out they don't go after what God has for them their desire is not strong enough to overcome the fear overcome the giants overcome the strong walls and they die in the wilderness fast forward 40 years their children they go into the promised land and they fast forwarding some more time 
and in their history of conquering things they only conquer a small portion of a promised land that God has promised them and they settle for that and didn't go conquer any further from this we can learn one lesson for us is that it's not what God desires for you that will manifest in your life but it is what you desire him to do in your life and how much you desire it how much you long for it how much you seek it how much you pursue it your desire and the greatness of your desire will determine what you will have in your life not God's desire in your life because God he can give you he has ability to do anything and everything it is what you desire him to do in this story we read and we see that blind man comes to Jesus and he says have mercy on me you know he was a blind man and he was a beggar he was begging for food you know he could have asked Jesus for some money he could have settled to ask Jesus for some money he could have settled and asked Jesus for some food he could have settled and asked Jesus I don't know maybe for shelter he could have settled for anything but he said Jesus give me sight and Jesus didn't said oh no you know this is too much how about I'll just give you lots of money or I'll give you I don't know I'll give you something else he gave him exactly that what he was desiring and he was going after God wants to grant the desires of your heart the question is do you have the desire and how strong the desire are uh, your desires are we're gonna go into uh, and kind of learn a little bit more about it um, first point I want you to write it down God wants to see your strong desire you know the truth is is that many of us really don't know what we really want today we see um, somebody you know we're uh, we're driving old uh, beaten up car and today we we see somebody driving a uh, an, a, a nice Toyota Corolla and so we're like oh man I want that and then the next day we see somebody driving Lexus we're like well forget Corolla I want Lexus now and the next day we see somebody driving a Lamborghini or or, or uh, something else he's like forget about forget about Toyota I want that and then every day every other week our desire changes and if we really look deep down on inside we do want progress and success but but that's all general and our desire is not concrete and we're all over the place and so you have to have a desire that is strong that will carry through will carry that the desire will stay with you through days through weeks through months that you see it till the end you have to have a desire that's kind of like unbreakable you focused and you go after it until you get it you pay the price you pursue it and you conquer it and you don't switch you know today you like this girl oh yeah she's fine and then you uh, asked her for a number and she rejected you and tomorrow hey forget about this one this one looks just fine let me ask for her number um, okay uh, today you know you started this business and you know and yeah I, I want to make money I want to do this and then you kind of you hit your first bump and you're like you know forget about it. I'm gonna start that business I'm gonna start that marketing uh, that, that multi-marketing uh, program or whatever it is you know tried advocate and advocate didn't work for me I'm gonna go for Herb's life or something try this I'm gonna go that didn't work I'm gonna and so what happens is we go around and we start dumping money three thousand dollars this five thousand dollars there five thousand dollars in this thing and then we started a whole bunch of things we tried in and we keep we keep failing we keep stopping halfway and at the end of the day we really don't know what we really want and therefore we do not succeed Bible says that uh, a man a doubting man is like a sea wave and he is a double-minded man and he succeeds at nothing you know a double-minded man is a man of no desire of no strong desire he is all over the place 
she's all over the place they start one thing they don't finish it they dump it and they go to another thing and they start many things never finish because they don't have they don't they didn't figure out what they really want they didn't grow the desire and they pursued it till the end you now desire comes from two things from needs or from wants it's easier to pursue a desire from a need because you need it something for example like a woman that had a daughter who was severely demon possessed and even though Jesus rejected her said listen I'm not I didn't come to uh to help people outside of Israel my mission is is to help the the children of Israel but her her desire her passionate pursuit for an answer was derived from a need she needed otherwise her daughter was gone as good as dead I mean her daughter was a lost cause that need drove her to get an answer and that's kind of where most people fall into for most part is that they have a need and they allow that need to drive them to a certain point until the need is fulfilled but the in order for you to reach your promised land the the need is not going to be enough you'll have to learn how to derive a desire from a want and sustain it and grow it does it make sense God can set you free and kind of remove certain problems in your life you know for example you're sick in your body and you know and and a desire to be healed is is strong because I mean you feel it it's in your body I mean doctors either gonna do something cut something out amputate or you're gonna be you know all the time on the medication or this or that and that desire pushes you but then a want to be healthy not many people have it you see what I'm saying because it's a now you're not you don't have the need to drive you to be healthy you're you're doing you're feeling okay and so not many people take the time to go and exercise and eat healthy and do all these things because it requires a whole nother level of discipline and commitment to d derive derive from a want de derive a desire from a want but if you're gonna reach your promised land you're gonna have to learn how to make your want a need so that it can push you forward so you can achieve and get what God has called you to get is anybody receiving it tonight <laughs> see the thing is is that we were created to be passionate we were created to we were created with God's image and God if you see something about God God gets what he wants yeah, yeah. did you notice that God never leaves it halfway he wanted humanity to be saved he went to the lengths of giving his own son to save you and me to reach us we were created in God's image and naturally we have that persistence look at children I have a little one if she wants something God forbid she doesn't get it she will be persistent and she will throw a fit and she will do this and that she even gets manipulative already here yeah? she understands when she wants them she'll come and give you a hug and say mama nice <laughs> and then this 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 she learned that word and points what she wants it's in our nature to express a desire and have to pursue what we want it's just over time as we grow older multiple times over and over we don't get the things that we want and we subdue the desire we come under the influence of demonic spirits that make us lazy lethargic passive those of you that have been in our church for some time and you sometimes hear the confessions of of demons and what one thing they always say i i made them lazy I made her not do this not want to pursue career not want to do this and not not being passionate and you see that that it's in our human nature to pursue and desire things but many times it's our experience and demonic influence that makes us to be passive and today I believe we're gonna pray and we're gonna break that over our life and we're gonna get passionate we're gonna get excited and we will pursue not what God wants us but what we want because God already put a desire in our heart for us initially to pursue it in Jesus name amen uh, let's write uh, just three practical steps how to 
uh, have a strong desire number one I think you have to give attention to it what you give attention to grows you have to what I mean by give attention to you have to constantly remind yourself of it you have to constantly keep it um, in forefront of you you have to constantly um, give focus to it you have to constantly keep it bring it up in your mind you have to give attention to it number two you have to feed it whatever your passion whatever you desire whatever you want to accomplish achieve you have to surround yourself with books surround yourself with material surround yourself with messages podcasts TED talks whatever it takes you have to feed the desire so the desire becomes stronger and stronger and stronger you have to fuel it and number three I believe you have to surround yourself with people that also have strong desires and ambition I've, I've noticed that in my life you know sometimes you know I consider myself a person that has a lot of desire and and ambition and if I decided to, to do something and you know I'll go for it sometimes even maybe a little bit overboard but when I get around people that uh, have this the same kind of zeal the same pursuit or even greater it challenged me and motivates me and it and it pushes me to do and to pursue what I want to what I desire what I want so I think these are three practical things that personally in my life that help me to pursue and to cultivate that desire within me. Point number two that I want to share and let you know is the desire, your desire will always be tested. Your desire will always be tested. This is actually will be determined if the desire is real or is just lost. You know, I, oh, you know, lost enough to that car, somebody has that car, you know you know discover this spur moment I'm oh, you know what I'm gonna go I'm gonna work hard I'm gonna you know get an extra job I'm gonna buy this house I'm gonna buy this car I'm gonna have this kind of business I'm gonna do that and it's kind of temporary kind of like more of like a lust thing I want to have what he has covenantness versus having that real desire there's nothing wrong with having things in life there's nothing wrong with what desiring to have a better car better house there's nothing wrong to to pursue greater things better career better pay pursue a greater business but is that a desire or is, a, is that just a loss for that thing and the way it will be determined is through the test uh, a story from the Bible Elisha Elijah God tells to gives Elijah a couple assignments uh, and then he says one of the things is that you go find another person and pass on your anointing I'm just gonna paraphrase the whole thing pass on your anointing pass on your mantle so Elijah Elijah goes and he finds Elisha he tosses the mantle to him Elisha picks it up and he follows Elijah he received a promise to be an ex-prophet he is to be the next prophet after Elijah he got the calling yay he's the he's the chosen one he received word of prophecies in his life you know that you're going to be a great evangelist you're going to be a great businessman businesswoman you're going to be this person you can be this God has a great destiny for you Woo -hoo! yes if God said it God will take care of it I'm just going to go eating potato chips and, and watch a Netflix show let it be so God let it be here's the thing though Elijah is right about to Elijah is right about to be taken up and Elijah is telling to Elisha stay back I'm leaving don't follow me and this is where his calling and his desire was put to test should I stay back or should I keep following my calling should I listen to what other people telling me because there's another 300 prophets that came out to him say listen your master will be taken up don't follow him or should I continue to pursue my calling should I continue to pursue that should I continue to pursue that desire that goal that passion that ambition that I have it was tested then Elijah himself told him don't follow me and then he continued to follow you can see that he had a desire he, he wanted what he was in pursuit after he wanted that call he wanted that mantle on his life and he continued to follow him and Elijah made a deal he said if you see me taken up well, he, first he asked him what do you want from me and this is the key moment can because he didn't quit because he didn't give up he didn't stay back 
here comes that moment Elijah asking what do you want from me he says give me the double after Elijah's taken up second time he gets the second mantle this is where he uses to to break the waters walk through the Jordan and becomes a, 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 a prophet with the double anointing that Elijah had anytime you're gonna make up your mind to pursue something anytime you're gonna get this desire this zeal to pursue something and maybe it's in a business idea maybe it's to grow your home group maybe it's to become a pastor maybe it's to become uh, a musician maybe it's become a professional athlete maybe it's to become a I don't know what it is that you desire that God's given desire within you you always be tested whether you really want it or it's just a temporary desire the lust of, of 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 the fame of the success of the of the uh, achievement that you had another story Israelites we talked about them God brings them out of Egypt God supporting him at uh, them with his miracles with his signs I mean tremendous things are going God just drowned the whole army the strongest empire uh, of that time in the Red Sea I mean God is doing great things feeding them in a desert uh, providing all these things for them and at the moment of test of their desire do they really want to be in a promised land do they really want to be there do they really want to possess the, the promise of God they see some few big men some strong walls they see they begin to and they get shaken in their desire and they say nah, God just brought us out here to die forget about the promised land we're, we're better off in Egypt and they start going backwards that desire is tested and doesn't stand the test of time the test of temptation the test of hardship your desire what you want the goal that you set the uh, you know I want to be a millionaire by, by age 30 25 I want to I want to I want to build uh, my home group um, to six people by the end of the year or by in in uh, in in one year or in 18 months there's gonna come a time where either things will not go the way they're going or whether it's gonna be discouragement what or maybe some setbacks you will experience and your desire will be put to test and this is where you decide do I pursue it do I continue to believe it? Do I continue to cultivate and, uh, and feed this flame of desire inside of me? Or do I shrink back and I give up or settle for what I already have and forget about the promised land? Forget about the fullness of God that He has for me. Even if God will give you a miracle of something that you ask for, if you didn't passionately desire, you either will not appreciate it or you will quickly lose it that's 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 only two outcomes when God will give you something in your life whether it's a spouse whether it's a business whether it's a promotion whatever it might be if God does a miracle in your life without your participation without your earnest desire you either will not appreciate it and you will be a spoiled brat which God doesn't like those just letting you know or number two you will just quickly lose it you have to want it bad enough and you have to sacrifice for it Solomon in his life he wanted God you know we read, we read Solomon and we listen to you know we kind of read about his life and it was like God comes to him and said just ask me whatever you want you were like wow you know yes God ask me what I want and stuff but if you really see in Solomon you will see through his sacrifice you will see the depth of his desire for wisdom to govern his people right Solomon then didn't just Solomon didn't just kind of at the spur of the moment the first thing that rolled into his head God said what do you want and Solomon just like you know spin the fortune fortune wheel and the fortune wheel landed on wisdom yes God you know I want wisdom if it would land it on you know uh, much gold and he would pick that no we see that Solomon sacrificed a thousand bulls to express his deepest desire for God to pay attention to him and then God comes and says what do you want God already knew his desire God 
Bible says that it's not nothing's hidden for God it's just written so that we could see it today so we can read it God knew his deep desire his depth in depth of his desire he wanted to govern he wanted to have a wisdom so he can govern God's people and that's why God asked him the question you have to pay the price you have to sacrifice in order to see your desire be fulfilled whatever it takes if you want to be successful you ask any athlete you ask any person that achieved greatness we just had, had olympics people for four years train for that 30 seconds a minute minute 32 minutes i don't think there's any event besides triathlons that last anything longer than a couple minutes for four years you can't do that without intense desire you can't become a person that god called you to be without passionate ambitious desire whatever it is whether it's in your marriage whether it's in your health whether it's to grow your home group whether it's becoming somebody whether it's starting a business whether it's it's moving further in your career you have to have a passion and desire and God can help you have it because God initially instilled it into you and point number three strong desire will unlock your destiny Bible says Proverbs 10 24 the fear of the wicked it shall come upon him but a desire of the righteous shall be granted God doesn't give anything to us without us earnestly want it you know that God even doesn't even offer his gifts of the Holy Spirit even though they're free the gifts without Apostle Paul says zeal for it zeal for it God is not going to toss anything to, at you and give you anything significant in your life without you having a passion desire for it you have to want it and you have to want it bad enough no one stumbles into greatness nobody stumbles into greatness greatness must be greatly greatly desired Thomas Edison had a strong desire to perfect a light bulb that's why he never gave up over thousands and thousands of times trying to make it better Steve Jobs had a strong desire to um, to make user experience better and easier and to change the computer industry started um, Apple company things didn't go well got fired from it started another company called next that computer did not uh, or cube something like that uh, sorry if I'm getting things right wrong that computer that, that company didn't go so well the kind of kind of failed got back got, got hired back at apple and then created that mac user experience that today me and you and many of you are enjoying it and today apple is considered number one number one valued company in the world but that was not without great desire to see it come overcoming many obstacles overcoming many failures many bankruptcies to come to the place to see things accomplished Hannah became a mother of prophet Samuel which anointed the greatest king David passion and desire anything that is conceived with great desire gives birth to greatness anything that is conceived with great desire give birth gives birth to greatness Hannah she was childless and with great desire great passion great ambition she was crying out to God God open the womb I'll do anything I'll even give my own child to you at use uh, for service she went that great and God couldn't pass the desire he had to grant it David was a man after God's own heart you know David had a great desire after God David was willing to lose his kingdom but he asked God please at just one thing I ask don't don't take your spirit away from me he said take everything I don't care take the kingdom take take everything but don't take your spirit from me and God couldn't pass that God couldn't ignore that that's why God called him a man after his own heart a man of a great great desire great passion Paul Apostle Paul that we read today two-thirds of a testament a great hero a, 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 a mighty man of faith but you know he started off having a desire for the wrong thing but he was passionate he was passionate he was 
he thought he was working for God he thought he was doing things for God then God came on the scene kind of corrected him said hey you're doing the wrong thing and then Apostle Paul turns around right away he says God what will you have me do what will you have me do and next thing you know Apostle Paul goes not not even one bit loses that desire the desire that you know an ounce of that desire to serve God goes on this great expose for God many times gets beaten many times in shipwreck many times dies many times uh, almost dies many times in in starvations but he doesn't lose the desire to serve God and at the end of the day he says I run the race I accomplished everything that I God has called me to do he's a man of a great desire and today we read two-thirds of his of the testament that was written by him today we live off of the words that was inspired by the Holy Spirit through him because he was a man of a great desire Apostle Paul says fight according to your prophecies my question is isn't it if God said it you know if, how do they say um, if God's will God's will type of a thing you know God if God decides to do something in my life he'll take care of it he'll give me money for it and all this stuff but that's not many times it's used are complete out of context if that was the case then Apostle Paul would not say fight according to your prophecies hold on to the desire hold on to that passion hold on to that goal keep fighting until you get to the end today I'm asking you a question today Jesus is asking you a question what do you want from me what do you want me to do for you what do you really really want me to accomplish in your life because he wants to do a lot for you he wants to establish you he wants to raise you up he wants to establish a legacy your legacy he wants to bless you with many blessings he wants he wants to multiply you he wants to he wants to enrich you he wants to give you a breakthrough that's what he wants but what do you want what do you want today and God will help you if you make up your mind today